So how are we sensing underwater then if not using say light or radio waves or satellite? And that's where I began digging deeply and I understood that sound was the key to understanding the ocean better. And that started off my journey where I did my PhD in underwater acoustics and I've never looked back since then. Hi, uh, my name is Hari Vishnu. I'm a senior research fellow in the Acoustic Research Laboratory housed within the Tropical Marine Science Institute in the National University of Singapore. My research is on underwater acoustics and signal processing, which is basically I study how sound travels in the ocean and how we can use this and use sound to sense the oceans around us. Moving forward, we thought, okay, so since sound gives a good picture of what's happening there, we want to try and use this to go to the next step, which is try and understand how fast the glacier is melting. The idea is the faster the glacier melts, the faster these bubbles are going to pop out. So there should be a louder, larger crackling sound. So why not use this sound to try and understand how fast the glacier is melting, to try and invert this information instead. We haven't gotten there yet, but that is what we are working towards. And in the long run, we are trying to develop insights based on what we've got from this large system. We want to be able to get a handy small system that maybe we just go and drop it into the ocean and it sits there recording the data for months at a glacier and then we take it back. Singapore is tropical island heaven, whereas the Arctic we think of it as serene, remote and unexplored. But what struck me was the uncanny similarity in their soundscapes and that was quite a revelation to me. Well, we think of the Arctic as a very serene and silent place, but underwater, it's actually quite noisy. A single bubble produces a pop sound, but now you have lots of bubbles exploding over a very large area and suddenly you have this very loud environment. And it turns out that that's the story over here too, which is the surprise factor. In Singapore waters, you have a lot of shipping activity that contributes to sound, but you also have a lot of snapping shrimp. And each shrimp by itself produces one snap. But suddenly you scale up this process of a single bubble bursting from snapping shrimp snap, scale it up to a lot of shrimp sitting on the seafloor, and suddenly you have a very loud soundscape. I also involve in studying bioacoustics, which is the sound produced by marine mammals in Singapore waters. Now, it may come as a surprise to you, but the dolphin echolocation sonar is actually very powerful. In fact, it is the most powerful sonar for its particular size and frequency. And despite many decades of human technological development of sonar, we still haven't caught up to that. So it's a marvel how nature has developed such an advanced sonar just through evolution. And the hope is that by tapping into this, we can use such intuitions for developing our own more powerful sonars. My advice to the next generation uh, trying to pursue ocean sciences or oceanic engineering would be these are great times to live in. Uh, you have a lot of opportunities. You have a lot more opportunities than the previous generations. There is a lot of information available at your fingertips. Also, with the United Nations stepping in with the decade of ocean sciences, there is a lot of trust in trying to bring youngsters on board. There are a lot of scholarships out there a lot of internship opportunities, a lot of funding available for you to go and pursue your own pet project. Try to find a mentor because very often than not, there are people out there who are willing to help you. We know less about the depths of our ocean than we know about the surface of the moon or Mars. There's a lot more it has to teach us. We have a lot of new medicines we can discover from under the oceans. There, we have a lot of new energy resources that can, we can develop. So, Next time you go out to the beach, don't just think about not littering. Yes, uh, very important not litter, but imagine what the ocean is about, how it connects you to the rest of the world.